So you're considering moving to Tampa, Florida, and you've got questions you'd like to ask that Google just can't answer for you. In today's video, I'll share with you my top five places to move in Tampa, Florida, why you'd love them, why you might not love them. And by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what Tampa neighborhoods best suit your ideal lifestyle. Plus, I'll even give you a bonus area here in Tampa Bay that me and my family absolutely love, so make sure you stick around for that. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. A little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I packed up our family of five, sold almost everything we owned, moved 1,200 miles south here to the greater Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. However you gotta get hold of us, just feel free to reach out. All my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule the time that's most convenient for you. Now, Tampa Bay is one of the gems here on the west coast of Florida. And if you're not familiar with the entire area, you know, Tampa Bay is here in the central west region of the state. Uh, the greater Tampa Bay area has about 3.2 to 3.3 million residents. We'll see when the next census comes out, but somewhere in that range. And it is the furthest western point of the state until you get way up north in the panhandle there. And our area is awesome. You know, greater Tampa Bay area makes up areas like Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Wesley Chapel, Parrish. And heck, you can even start to pull Sarasota, Bradenton in that area as we, you know, really start to close the gap here. They're only an hour away from each other. So I think people would definitely see that as, as a overall um, region. But when it comes to moving to the area, you know, most people aren't actually choosing to move to Tampa. Now, I'm not saying it's not popular. We're covering this video because it is, but what we have found in our experience is a lot of people choose to live either closer to the beaches, areas like Clearwater and St. Pete, or they're moving out to the suburbs, areas like Lakewood Ranch, Parrish, uh, Wesley Chapel, Odessa, those types of areas as well. But today we're gonna be focusing on the specific neighborhoods within Tampa proper. And if you've never been to Tampa before, it is an absolute awesome city to go explore and enjoy. Um, it is what I would refer to as a very large little city. <laughs> and when you arrive, you'll kind of get a sense for that. We have the skyscrapers and the tall buildings, but it's not massive and it's not overwhelming. And that is one of the things I absolutely love about the city of Tampa. Do we have heavy traffic at certain times? Are there areas that are more congested? Are there pros and cons when it comes to living here in Tampa Bay? And the answer to that is yes. In today's video, we're going to cover five specific neighborhoods and, and areas where we see people choose to move. And some of them are absolutely lights out and they're also super pricey. So I want to keep that in mind. And other areas have more to offer in terms of um, maybe a little bit more affordability and the different type of lifestyle. And that's why we're going to get into these neighborhoods today specifically. And I can't wait to share this list with you. Now, if you're someone who enjoys the hustle and bustle of a city, then downtown Tampa is going to be for you. Now, when it comes to the pros of living in Tampa, you know, you're going to have access to world class entertainment, amenities, activities, walkability, public transportation, dining, restaurants, uh, shops, boutiques, uh, sports venues. I mean, there are so many things you get to do when you live in downtown Tampa. I mean, we're a sports crazed city. You've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that play up in Raymond James Stadium. Right across the street from there is actually Steinbrenner Stadium, which looks like a mini replica of Yankee Stadium where the Yankees do spring training. You've also got Amalay Arena, which is where the Tampa Bay Lightning play right on um, the, the river there. So you can jump on the river walk. And if you've never been on the Tampa Bay Riverwalk, you are missing out. It is actually rated one of the best river walks in America and has been rated the best river walk in America also. That's something to keep in mind. But you've got um, you know, sports. You've also got concerts because of those venues as well. You've got the Tampa Convention Center, which brings a ton of people in every year for all different types of events. Um, you know, We just had the giant pirate invasion <laughs> that last over a month. Uh, we just this past weekend did the River O' Green where they dive the Tampa Tampa uh, River Green for St. Patrick's Day. People are running around everywhere. It's a great party, a place to go have fun and hang out. I mean, how can you not like St. Patrick's Day when it's 75 and sunny outside? It's very hard not to love that, right? So this city gives you a lot of access. Now, the people that you're most likely to see down there when you when you go into downtown Tampa is all kinds. 
different. Tampa is very diverse. And you can check out sites like niche.com where they'll speak to that type of diversity. But I also want you to be aware that the city itself is very young. 35.9 years of age is the median age of the resident here in Tampa. That is super young. This city has become very popular for young professionals. It also attracts families like myself. We love to go down there and spend money. And you do have a healthy mix of retirees who like to come in for sports venues, um, events, and those types of things. And then even live in downtown Tampa because of its walkability, because of its, um, because of all the entertainment and having everything at your fingertips. How cool is it to be able to walk out of your front door, go have have a, a, a great cup of coffee at a cafe, eat lunch at a, at a Michelin star restaurant, and just hang out in the city all day long. Tampa has a lot to offer. Now, the cons of living in Tampa have to do with the price tag. And with access to all the type of amenities that downtown Tampa has to offer, it also comes at a premium price tag. So you should expect a higher cost of living and a higher cost of housing compared to the suburbs that surround the city. Now, if you're looking to pick up a condo in one of those high rises downtown, you can expect that condo to most likely be a two bedroom, two bath, right around 1,550 square feet. And over the last 30 days, they've sold for an average right around $910,000. Now that is a lot higher <laughs> than the median sales price of a single family home in the city of Tampa, just to the north here. But when we're talking about downtown, it's coming with a premium price tag. Now, some of the other cons of living in downtown Tampa are that there is limited green space. There are parks in downtown that are wonderful, but it is limited, right? You also have a lot more noise and traffic that you're gonna have to deal with on a consistent basis. And there are gonna be a lot of strangers walking the streets. Um, now, my personal perspective is I have never felt unsafe in Tampa. I've shared this before, especially when it comes to downtown. But do your research. There are sites like uh, Scout, Neighborhood Scout, which is a great resource. And then we also link the Tampa Bay crime map down in the description below. So if you want more details on that, you can check it out. But again, my personal opinion is I would never have any issues with living downtown Tampa. I love the area. Um, we go hang out, whether it's at night or during the day, we've never felt concerned about it. Um, are there things that are gonna happen in the city that I'm unaware of and you know things that could be deemed unscrupulous or dangerous? I'm sure there are just like every other major city in the United States, but do your diligence here. I can't tell you whether, whether something's legally safe or not. I've shared that before because I have a real estate license, but this is something that you need to be aware of. So. Pros and cons of living in downtown Tampa, but it is absolutely on the top five of my list. The second neighborhood on my list of top five places to live in Tampa, Florida is none other than Hyde Park. And you've, if you've watched any of our videos in the past, um, you, you know exactly how I feel about this place. It is the perfect mix of urban, suburban, and bay living. Now, it is just to the southwest of downtown Tampa. When I say just to, <laughs> I literally mean just to. It is only an eight minute, uh, bike ride if you're gonna go over from Hyde Park to downtown Tampa. I mean, it's nuts that you can literally go from your backyard to the Tampa Convention Center and just take a short walk over a bridge in order to do that. It is so cool how that's set up. And um, I love this area. It gives you access to the bay. You've got access to Bayshore Boulevard, which is the longest continuous stretch of sidewalk in the United States. You can go out there, run and walk in the morning, see the dolphin popping out of the bay. This place is so cool. And when you go to the Hyde Park Village specifically, make sure you go down to the Salty Donut in the morning. Y'all, these donuts are to die for. You will love it. The village has a its own just in just incredible feel you walk around there are people out shopping there are great restaurants you can smell the food you can head over to bar taco you can go over to the meat market you know and have one of the most incredible steak dinners you've ever had make sure you go over to buddy brew and get a cup of coffee uh, all the boutiques and restaurants that are down there head over to West Elm to fill up this beautiful home that you're about to buy there's a lot to be desired here in the area and you're not going to be disappointed there's even a theater down there now there is parking which is really cool the one thing about downtown Tampa, even though we have parking garages, parking spaces on the street are very limited and they're limited here in um, in Hyde Park also, but there are two public parking structures that give you access to a lot of um, parking spaces. So that's usually not a problem. Great restaurants like Nampano down there. And then again, uh, I love Sprinkles. There, there's so many different things you guys can go do down there. 
our kids love going. Took my daughter Eva down there for her birthday. She absolutely loved it. Now, those are the pros of living in Hyde Park. What are some of the cons of living in Hyde Park? Well, one of the cons could be, and this is not a con for everybody, but it is a con for most people, is that a three bedroom, three bath, 2,200 square foot home in Hyde Park is gonna cost you right around $1.7 million on average. <laughs> and most people do not have access to that kind of income. But for the ones that do, this is that area that you want to make sure you check out because it is absolutely stunning, y'all. The mix of, of old craftsman style and bungalow homes and the old growth oak trees that hang out over the streets, it just has that classic Americana vibe to me. But like I said, it is the perfect mix of urban, suburban, and bay. It will not disappoint. So the third area on my list here is Davis Islands. Now, when you're looking at a map here, the thing I want you to recognize is all of these areas are very close together. This one is just south of downtown Tampa. And um, this is, we've, we've done videos on this area before. I always say this is where the other half live. You know, this is where Tom Brady had a home. This is where a lot of the athletes tend to live in the area. Not all of them, but they tend to live in areas like Davis Island. Um, you got Tampa General Hospital right over here also. Um, and one of the fun facts of Davis Island is it's a very scenic view when you're riding around but one of the fun facts here is there is actually no street lights. There's not a single stoplight um, on Davis Islands, but it gives you access to a lot. There are a little over 3,000 um, homes and condos on the islands. Um, and so it's a very tight knit community, small. It's a great place to go run or, or, or ride a bike. And the community is um, very open, right? What I mean by that is like, it feels like inclusive and like, it's just very welcoming. Every time I've been to Davis Islands and just to go hang out or spend time, um, you know, it's just been a really enjoyable experience. And again, knowing that all you have to do is cross a very small bridge to be right back downtown, there's no wonder people love living here. It does have its own private airport. That is something that is really cool, hence the reason why athletes probably live there. And one of the things I absolutely love here about Davis Islands is its laid back feel. You'll notice that right away once you cross over onto this island here, Islands. It was two that was, it's man-made. It's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> I did this on a video before because it was really hard for me to understand when I first moved down. I'm like, that's one island, but we're calling it Davis Islands. And um, there was a gentleman who took the property and put it together and then he sold off all lots, but we'll do that in a whole nother video. Now, what are the cons of living on Davis Islands? Well, just like the exclusivity in Hyde Park breeds extremely high real estate prices, it also does that in Davis Islands. I mean, I shared just a couple weeks ago that there is a vacant piece of land on Davis Islands that is for sale for $10 million. I mean, those prices are insane, y'all. And they get those. And um, they tear down houses that cost multi-million dollars to buy, and they are building up new ones on those uh, lots, and they are getting a healthy premium for them. The luxury real estate market here in Tampa has grown exponentially over the last two years. Even with uh, interest prices soaring, you know, we're talking about a different type of market here that typically is not financed. People are paying for these. Now, if you were gonna buy a single family home on Davis Island, what would that cost? Well, you'd be looking at a three bedroom, three bath, 20. 600 square foot for roughly 1.7 million dollars also it's almost identical to what you're paying for in Hyde Park but you actually do get a few extra square feet here um, and it was nominal at a, at a couple hundred extra square feet but those things do matter again this is one of the more exclusive areas in all of Tampa so keep that in mind if that is uh, what you're looking for is that the type of lifestyle that you covet then you're definitely gonna want to check out areas like Davis Islands and Hyde Park Village you're gonna love both of those areas so the next Next neighborhood on our list is one that has undergone a remarkable transformation over the last few years. It's really well known for its trendy bars, its family-owned restaurants, its thriving art, its Saturday morning market, and its proximity to Armature Works. And if you've ever heard me talk about Armature Works, you guys know it's one of the places that Kate and I love to go. When we go on date night, we find ourselves often, probably at least once a month, we go to Armature Works. And there, we love the place. It's the um, it's the old house where all the rail cars used to go and they would do repair and house them overnight, right? So at the end of the day, when the rail cars would shut down back in the 20s and 30s, they would go to the uh, armature works there and they would, you know, the mechanics would work on them. They would do everything they need to to get them ready for the next day. They have turned this building into a giant, um, I wanna say food hall, but it's, it's way more than that, right? Yes, uh, Steelbach, which is one of our favorite steakhouses in all of Tampa Bay. We love going there. 
Um, that is one of our favorite places to go, but they've got places like Empa Mama. They've got Hemingway where you can get a great Cuban sandwich. They've got um, Astro ice cream. They've got sushi there, pizza. There is a cocktail bar. You can eat outside. They put a Christmas tree. We've done um, movies on the lawn there. Our kids love to go there. There's a great restaurant called Gray's. They make one of the best hamburgers that um, I absolutely love in the area. There is a Buddy Brew coffee there. You guys know how much I love Buddy Brew. Um, you can eat both inside and outside. You're staring at the river. You're looking at Tampa High School. You're looking at the city as a backdrop. When you're done with that, you can walk over to the river. That's the, the very tip on the north end of Tampa there from downtown, that's the north end of the Riverwalk. And forgive me for not telling you guys where it is, but what we're talking about is just north of downtown now. And uh, so again, you're at the north end of the Tampa Riverwalk. You can walk all the way back down to Channel Side, which is amazing. So these are areas that are worth checking out and you will not be disappointed. And a huge plus of living in Seminole Heights is the cost of living. This comes far more in line with the median cost of a house here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And right now you can find a three bedroom, two bath, single family home Home that's about 1,400 square feet in that $436,000 price range over the last 30 days. That is far more affordable than the 1.7 million we've been discussing over the last two or three areas. So that is something that is a huge pro when it comes to living in Seminole Heights. Now, some of the cons of living in Seminole Heights are this area is still undergoing this transformation that we're speaking of. And, you know, there are a lot of older homes there in the area. Some of these homes are 80, 90 years old. The streets are a little bit tighter. Again, we're limited on parking. Some of these areas where you have these bars and restaurants, it can get a little bit noisy. Nothing that's out of control, but this is one of those areas, right? Like you have to keep in mind what you're seeing. Usually when things are cheaper, that usually is for a reason, right? It may not be the best quality, there may be areas that still need improvement. Um, there's just a lot of things to consider. So like I said before, make sure you're doing your diligence on here, but this is one of those areas where we see young professionals. Um, I know people love to make fun of hipsters, but that's definitely who you're gonna find here. Um, the area is really diverse, so that is something to keep in mind too. Again, you can check all of the information that I'm that I'm sharing with you right now on, on websites like niche.com. That's a great website to use. We use it all the time. Neighborhood Scout, that's a good one to go for a crime. And then again, I always put the Tampa crime map in the description down below so you guys have access to that. Now that brings us to the fifth area that made my list of top five places to move here in Tampa. And this area is actually been recognized as the number one suburb in all of Florida, by the way, not just Tampa. And that is none other than West Chase. Now we've done lots of videos on the pros and cons of West Chase, the benefits. There aren't a whole lot of cons, to be honest with you. Um, but we've done a lot of videos on there. We will make sure we link those in the description below. As a matter of fact, I'll put one up at the end of the video, so stick around for that so you can go right into West Chase if that is your bag. West Chase is definitely more of the suburban feel compared to the other areas we've been looking at. The other areas I would say are a, a much more keen mix of either urban and suburban. Um, this one tends to lean far more to the suburban end of the spectrum. It is still in Tampa. It is a master planned community. I know not everybody's heard that term before, but basically before they broke ground, they designed the entire area, every park, every neighborhood, uh, every location where shops were going to be before everything anything was ever built and um, if you've ever lived in an old city you know that that's not common so to see that it feels entirely different and on and for a reason it was done intentionally so it's got a different feel to it now west chase is one of those areas that ranks really high on education here in the greater tampa bay area according to niche and it also ranks really high in terms of diversity so take a look at those if those things are important to you this is an area you're going to want to take into serious consideration. Now you do lose some of that urban feel and you're definitely going to lose some of that bay feel as well because it is about you know 10 or 15 minute drive time to see the water again um, and that's just to the south of you and for those of you who aren't aware West Chase is up to the northwest side of Tampa that is literally the last of it then you get into Oldsmar um, so something to keep in mind there also but man what a cool area the park down there is awesome I've showed you guys the shops before I mean you've got a Costco in your backyard you've got Home Depot you got tar all the shopping you could ever ask for. Again, the schools are top rated when it comes to schools in the greater Tampa Bay area. You have access to either single family housing, townhome. Um, there's even villas over there, which is really cool. Also, there are apartments in the city center. There's like this uh, main street type of area down there. You got a fountain. The kids are always playing. There's parks over there too. It's a really, really cool spot. I love the area. You've got tennis, golf, swimming pools, 
everything you could ever ask for. There are gated communities there. Also, there is a lot to love about living in West Chase. Oh, and one of the things I forgot to mention there is you're only about 35 minutes away from Clearwater Beach too, one of the best beaches in America, according to TripAdvisor. Now, some of the cons of living in West Chase is the traffic can be a little bit heavy. Most people who live in West Chase tend to work downtown. Uh, they'll work at the universities or they'll work at the defense companies, right? Companies like Lockheed Martin, you know, those are areas that Honeywell, those, those types of properties. They might work at USF, they might work for the hospital system. So people here tend to commute, which does put a little bit more strain on traffic, especially during school hours. That is something to keep in mind because it's going to be busy. Uh, also, the housing here is not cheap. The average home that sold over the last three days was a three bedroom, three bath, 2,500 square feet and sold for roughly 700 $156,000. So that's not inexpensive. We were just talking about Seminole Heights where it was four thirty. dollars um, Again, the median price here, median average in, in the greater Tampa Bay is $400,000. The average price is just over five. So this is still well above a couple hundred thousand over. Again, wonderful community. Definitely something to put on your radar if you cover more of a suburban type of lifestyle, but still have really good access to all of those amenities the city has to offer. I mean, heck, you're only 18 minutes away from Tampa Airport. You're 25 minutes to downtown, even when traffic's not great. And again, 35 minutes to Clearwater Beach. It's a really, really nice area. So definitely something to take into consideration. And I hope you're getting value out of today's video. I would love to know which Tampa neighborhood is your favorite. Maybe it didn't make this list, but please let us know in the comments down below. People love to read those comments and I love to respond to them. I respond to to every legitimate comment you have. So please share that. And if you have more questions or you're considering moving the area, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. Okay, and I promised you guys a bonus area and I wanted to share that with you. I'm not gonna get in the sales statistics about housing and all those other things, but here's what I want you to know. No matter what area you choose here in Tampa, I gotta be honest with you, there is something for everyone. If you prefer the urban living, you can be right downtown, right? If you want that perfect mix of bay, urban, and suburban, you can do areas like Hyde Park, you can do areas like Davis Islands. These areas are just awesome. If you prefer something that is, you know, going through a more transformational type of living, which some people do love that, they love to see a city evolve, then Seminole Heights might be right up your alley. If you're someone who, you know, covets having really good schools, having a lot of diversity and a more suburban feel, then West Chase may be that area for you. Again, it was voted the number one suburb in Florida. So I think that that is super important to take note of. Now, if you want to just get out and go check out a great area to go hang out, my recommendation is go check out St. Pete. Now, St. Pete living is not for everybody. Again, it's got that very unique mix of urban and suburban. Also, um, you could live in a high rise condo staring at the bay if you want. You can be looking back at your, your, your friends there in Tampa, or you can live closer to the beach, St. Pete Beach, if you want. So it gives a lot of access. But the thing I love about St. Pete is it is a vibe. All the things we have happening in downtown Tampa are amazing. There's a lot of new things that the people are starting to discover, and there's a lot of rich history in Tampa also. But St. Pete Petersburg offers a vibe unto its own and it is worth checking out. Now, I take people there and they like, I can't believe this is what this city is because they've been told lots of things about St. Pete. And St. Pete, from my understanding, and I have not lived here for more than five years, right? I've been here just over five and a half years. I didn't see St. Pete 10 years ago. I didn't see St. Pete 15 years ago. And my understanding was pretty rough. It is not like that now. Now, are there areas that aren't perfect? For sure, but that's not what's important. Go down there, enjoy the nightlife. Go down there, have a great meal. Go walk on the bay, go check out the marina, go check out the art. You can go to the Dolly Museum, go see a soccer game at the Rowdies. There's so many things you can do over there too. And I'm not here to tell you that one is better than the other. I just wanna make sure that you guys get the most out of your experience here in the greater Tampa Bay area. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions about relocating to the area or buying or selling, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. As always, all of our contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. And I'm gonna let Google put the videos up here that I think make the most sense. I'll make sure I put that West Chase video up here so you guys can check that out. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.